we do this. <laughs> well, y'all are getting settled. My name is uh, Ted Ryan. I'm the Archives and Heritage brand manager. So welcome to the archives. In here, we've got 16,000 cubic feet of uh, papers, uh, three miles of shelving, 3.5 million negatives, and a bunch of other stuff. But today we're going to uh, talk Mustang. All the different presenters are gonna talk to you about their Mustang stories. Uh, mine is simple, I'll just hold it up. This is me and my dad in 1969 with his Mustang. And then my three sons and I with my Mustang uh, just a short couple of years ago. So we all have a Mustang story and uh, we all channel the Mustang because you, it brings us youth and excitement and energy. I was a cute toe headed kid too. So uh, within the Mustang lore, how did we get a Mustang? And we've pulled some really cool documents for you here. It came out of good marketing research. In the in the mid 1950s, we did bad research and it got us the Edsel, but in the early 60s and beginning in 1961, uh, we uh, began doing more concise market research and it told us that the baby boomer generation was coming of age. Uh, more affluent, better educated, more two car families. Uh, they wanted their own music and they got the Beatles, wanted their own fashion, you got bell bottoms and they wanted their own car. And you can look on that table over there and look at some of the styling choices. The one in the middle, is actually the the design choice or the design uh, put forward by the Ford studio. Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, and Advanced Studios had a competition. That was the one that was chosen. It was actually the driver's side door. On the deck, you can see a couple from uh, Advanced Studio. The, uh, so they were gonna be futuristic, but they were all gonna be small. They were all gonna be sporty, and uh, they were gonna be inexpensive. With this blue piece of paper, uh, anything on blue paper meant it was from an executive vice president or higher. In this particular case, this is the document that uh, Lee Iacocca sent to the uh, product planning board uh, to get the Mustang approved. And you'll see it's called the Special Falcon Project. They wanted to keep uh, as many parts interchangeable with the Falcon as they could. Uh, and you got the ultimate design of what became the Mustang. Uh, some of the other things, uh, Talk about a miscalculation on this document, you'll see that we only projected 75,000 units would be sold the first year. Uh, obviously we blew through that because we did 22,000 the first day and 475,000 the first year. And then this other one you'll see, we didn't have a name. Uh, as late as May 1963, there's three choices, the Cougar, the Mustang, or the Thunderbird II. Uh, so ultimately, thankfully, uh, we chose the Mustang. Uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. They're not top secret, uh, but that's like the holy grail within the archives. This, and you don't get to see it very often too. And if you, if you have time when you leave, uh, my staff is here, they'll help you. You can actually read through the entire thing. You can see the budget projections, you know, what Ford was thinking in uh, December, 1962. So after its launch, it was pretty quickly, I'll just uh, reverse over here. Mustang is introduced, it pretty quickly becomes a racing car. Uh, I borrowed these from Henry Mann of Allen Mann Racing. Uh, we sent over four Mustangs in July of 64, just after the intro. And Allen Mann prepped them and raced them in the Tour de France, the 10 day endurance race. And it included hill climb, sprints, uh, endurance racing. Uh, the Mustangs took first and second place. Uh, so quickly uh, got its chops going as a, as a racing car. And you can see Ford turn right around and begin advertising. Uh, Mustang's endurance race, one of class in the Tour de France, uh, the pure uh, perform oil performance trials, you know, all these different races. The next racing case, we wanted to pay homage to Lynn St. James, who was just inducted into the uh, Automotive Hall of Fame. So you can see Lynn and some of her Mustangs uh, that she raced over time. Uh, we just did an oral history with her. Uh, what a fantastic uh, race driver and a very uh, interesting pioneer. With that, how does a car go from being a car introduced to a race car to emerging into pop culture? So the next case is addressing the Mustang and pop culture. Everybody knows bullet, so we had to pay them, uh, you know, had to have our bullet up there. But the next column over, you'll see a bunch of James Bond materials. Um, the James Bond producers realized there were Mustangs in Europe in September of 1964 and used one for the filming of Goldfinger. Uh, it was Diamonds Are Forever, the Mach 1 on two wheels. Uh, you may be wondering why we have the collected works of Jim Morrison in our archives. Uh, we do because he only ever owned one car and it was a Mustang GT and he called it the Blue Lady and he drove it all over Southern California. 
with this QR code, make sure to take a picture of it to check it out later. I created a YouTube playlist of music videos that feature Mustang. So there's 47 videos that have been seen 14 billion, billion with a B times. Taylor Swift, uh, Justin Bieber, The Rolling Stones, Vanilla Ice. Uh, it's a who's who of artists and the Mustang is used in these videos because it adds to the plot. It tells you something about what they're thinking. Whether you know, Taylor Swift's gonna break up with her boyfriend, that's gonna be in a Mustang. Uh, so the Mustang is always integral to the plot. The last uh, cases are about Mustang and design and Mustang as a global entity. So the design, a Mustang has to look fast even standing still, which I think it does. Even the early 65 that's over there, looks 40 it looks fast even though it hasn't it hasn't gotten the shelby treatment yet or the you know the the huge engines that that they would get later and then the global entity you can see some of the different languages but the ad in the center sort of uh, sets the whole tone i love the the copy line the new girl in town once again evocative of, of feeling and freedom and motion with that that's the history part you'll have time back in here later to take pictures Like, who the hell even knows that there is a Monza today? I never heard and of I've got the scan. I'm happy to send this to you ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, you that you, so you can read through the whole document because that's yeah, really... Can you do that? Yeah, because we, we get breakdowns, $45 million investment, which I showed it to Farley. So here's... The, in between that 75000 they already went up and said, okay, low sides can be 120 high side 165 But we can through those numbers as well. Yeah.